Hey everyone, this is Dr. Walker. This is video 219. It is called uh, Equipotential Surfaces. And I'd like to start off this video with an applet. This is a FET applet. It's called Charges and Fields. We've seen it before. We used it when we put a charge and we showed the electric field surrounding the charge. If you remember that, we did that before. So what I'm going to use this applet for this time is I can use it to show equipotential surfaces. So what, that's what you see here. What I've done is I've put a positive charge here. Instead of showing the electric field, I've shown the electric potential at different points. And it turns out that all of these points here on this circle have a potential of 20 volts. All of these points here on this bigger circle have a potential of 5 volts. So all the points that are on this one surface, now it's technically a three-dimensional surface, but it looks like just a circle, then these are called equipotential surfaces because they all have the same potential. So I do want to show you a couple more just so you can kind of see how it works. So I'll start with a blank screen here. And I'll put a positive charge here. That's our electric field. And I'll put a negative charge here. And I will hide the electric field for a second, and I will put volt. Oh no, I won't put voltage. What I'll do is I have this sensor here, and it shows you the potential at any point that you want. So, let's pick the potential here, and then what you can do is you can use this pencil to show that you can see this is 15.35. All the points here, if you click directly on it, then it also has that 15.35. And then I'm just going to find another value and map an equipotential line. Find another value in between just to make it a little bit prettier. Let's do another one here and see what these look like. So when you had one charge, you just had a circle around it. Kind of like when you just had one charge, the electric field line just went straight out. But if you remember when there were coupled charges, then those electric field lines were bending. So I thought this pattern was pretty cool. Let's try to find one kind of in the middle. We kind of get a straight line. So if we found a point exactly in the middle somewhere, we would find it, uh, we would probably get a straight line, but it's kind of hard to do that there. So I just like to show you visuals as much as possible. And let's put the electric field back in here. So one thing that you'll notice about the electric field is you see how the lines were bending toward that negative charge. Remember that? They were bending toward that negative charge. Well, if you trace out how the lines are bending toward that negative charge, you'll see that, that those electric field lines, they're always hitting these green equipotential lines perpendicularly. You can see that. If you trace it out, you're always hitting it at that 90 degree angle. Let's go back to the lecture notes to see the couple of things. So an equipotential surface, as we just learned, is a surface on which all the points are the same potential. So hopefully you saw that in the applet. And then we also saw that the electric field at every point is perpendicular to the surface. And just if you remember the two plates that I love so dearly, right? These are an equipotential surface, right? We say, okay, maybe the voltage on this plate is 9 volts. They're all at the same potential. And maybe the voltage on this plate is 0 volts. And they're all at the same potential. And then we talked about the electric field pointing to the right, and it is perpendicular to that equipotential surface. The last thing I want to show you, in case the applet wasn't enough, are just a couple of patterns. So we saw this one, the equipotential lines around just a single charge make concentric circles. And we saw this as well. If we have two charges, you saw these equipotential lines, which are the dotted blue lines. They make kind of ovals. And the electric field lines that curve, they are always perpendicular to those equipotential lines. That's all for this video. I will see you next time.